Tell me, do you wear shoes? You will. Almost every McFarlane Batman collector was perplexed as to why McFarlane never actually released a proper BVS Batman. We got the tactical suit version, even some variants of said version, and uh, a very questionable whatever the hell that was for the Flash movie. But seeing as things are kind of slowing down for both Marvel and DC, and since DC itself, as far as a universe, a cinematic universe, is facing a form of reboot under James Gunn's oversight, then it looks like McFarlane figured to go back to the drawing board and kind of deliver on some things to play catch up on. And so now we finally have a proper, for the most part, because I know there's still going to be quite a bit of a contesting emotions from various people as far as likenesses and accuracy, but for the most part we got a proper BVS 2016 Batman McFarlane Toys figure. There's no armor, there's no tactical suit, there's no variances, there's no gimmicks. It's straight up the suit that you saw from the beginning of, or from the most, the majority of the 2016 often debated film. Regardless of how you feel about that movie, I think we can all kind of agree that Ben Affleck did a pretty serviceable job. I, I gotta be honest, I thought that he was cool, and frankly as far as appearances, he's actually one of the finer looking Batman as far as that version of the suit. Zack Snyder, in my opinion, did have a good head on his shoulders when it came to designing the suit and actually knowing what he wanted as far as the very animalistic and bulked up Batman that we have never seen before. We've had tactical versions with Nolan's universe, we had... Animal Panther slick and kind of overly nippleized versions from Schumacher. And then, of course, the very uh, gothic look to the Tim Burton version. But here we finally have something that's more keen to Dark Knight Returns. With the very big bat symbol on the front. The very uh, skin... I don't want to say skin-like, but the very mesh-looking suit that's properly... At least in the movie, properly uh, gray and black. And McFarlane did an adequate job of bringing that to light, especially when it came to that texture of the suit. Here in the 7-inch scale, you'll see that one thing that they definitely nailed is the skin-like, or the very skin-tight look to the suit that looks like actual cloth on top of some kind of padded up armor so you have an awful lot of those little wrinkle effects happening on the thighs the shoulder area that's kind of holding onto the bulging muscles as well as the very scale-like design to the texture, the actual you know, material that's actually happening amongst the sculpture within the biceps, the thighs, the abs, etc. And I love the little gashes to make it look very worn torn across the bat symbol there, which, frankly, when it was first unveiled back in, I want to say, like, 2014, 2015, when we finally got our first very brooding look at Batfleck, it, there was always something about the suit that I inherently liked. The bat symbol, the short ears, everything. It just, I'm like... This looks fresh. This looks actually brand new. And like I mentioned before, quite animalistic and imposing, intimidating. Something, a Batman that can actually be scary, just like he was in his intro scene in that original movie. And in terms of actually lifting that suit and giving us something that comes relatively close to that interpretation, McFarlane nailed it, except for maybe a little bit of the very obvious details which for me the one that st stood out from the very first unveiling promo shots from back earlier this year would have to be the color scheming he's not necessarily full-blown gray there's kind of like a little bit of a blue grayish tint to him that in terms of color clashes meshing with the black and even a little bit of the gold on the belt the very huge and slightly oversized belt that is sculpted very well but at the same time there are some you know things with the proportion of that belt that look a little too massive especially since the buckle is just so tiny there in the middle but in terms of the colors working with each other as far as from a complementary standpoint it works as far as accuracy not 100 percent because it was a bit more on the grayish side so to have that little tint that little hue right there He's just calling for people who do custom jobs to kind of retrofit him a little bit. Speaking of slight inaccuracies, I would have to say that for the most part, the proportion is in fact nailed as far as that huskier, bulkier Batman, specifically around the thighs, boots, leg areas. Uh, again, like I mentioned before, the boots are in the gauntlets for this version of Batman have always been kind of very general. You know, you have the typical gauntlets with the spikes there being a little bit shorter, just like with his ears. But other than that, there's never really been any significant detail to 
kind of make them stand out. But when we get to actual proportioning, it's that intimidating size. And my favorite parts about that imposing nature are definitely within the abdominal area where you have an awful lot of great musculature happening with the obliques and the abs and even a little bit of the chest behind the embroidered bat symbol that like I said is one of my favorite aspects about the suit and even this McFarlane figure and the thighs are massive thick thighs that definitely look like he is swole. That gets kind of lost in translation a little bit for me personally around the shoulder area. One of the things that I immediately called out when I pulled him out of the box is just how thin the the shoulders are comparatively to the torso. And again, this is a very bulky Batman. Ben Affleck did not skip out on any days in regards to his regiment. And you saw those shoulders from a mile away. So to see that the shoulders are just a little bit skimped out on as far as actually delivering on the size is a little bit of a bummer because you look at the arms right here. I don't know if maybe it was in the 3D printer, printing of the figure or in the overall conceptualizing stage, but I feel like the arms could have been a little bigger specifically around the shoulder area. Biceps may be okay, but I feel like it's one of those cases where you might, you know, pull up the slider on one aspect, but then that's going to cause a domino effect to have to bulk up the bicep, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So maybe some kind of overhaul needed to happen with the arms in general. And unfortunately, it doesn't really stop right there because as you navigate up, you then get the cowl and ne neck area, which in my opinion are just a little too elongated for the huskier looking Batman. He's always had this kind of cone-like design to his cowl from that 2016 movie to again make him look intimidating and animalistic to make him look like he's staring down at you and he's about to kick your ass not much of that is really happening with the neck area right here because of how much elongated it is i feel like they needed to shorten just a few areas from the top knots right here to then bring the head a little closer to the neck baseline to again give him that stubbier very animalistic look as far as the actual look of the cowl, I know that, again, this is going to be a point of contention for many collectors because of what things have been transpiring with Batfleck as far as licensing, as far as using the likeness of the stunt uh, double instead of Affleck himself. And I, I gotta be honest, I feel like we have that happening yet once again with Batfleck here, or lack thereof. It looks like it's a stunt double once more, except this time, I think we have a really great marriage of a slight resemblance to Ben Affleck while at the same time straying away just enough to avoid any kind of legality issues and to make sure that no no legal toes are stepped on as far as that likeness because the chin definitely kind of looks like Affleck's but with enough little nuances changed to not full on replicate past head sculpts that may be infringing on those likenesses so there's a good marriage here that i am personally happy with especially with the paint job behind the eyes the sunken eyes that really complement the cowl very well but again yes it's not going to be one-to-one -one accurate to how we saw before because that's where things get kind of iffy we've seen mcfarlane actually nail that affleck likeness before but the that's of course when they had kind of like the slack or the freedom to work with what they had because they had possible cr closer access to that likeness whether it be 3d prints of Affleck himself when he came into that studio and they probably scanned his face or any of the sort case in point it's going to be that Zack Snyder 2021 Batfleck with the tactical suit and you can see right there that they're pretty much the scale height is about the same and sizing is about the same except this also kind of hammers across the point that I was mentioning as far as the proportioning around those shoulders and neck area where you see an awful lot of that trademark Affleck, Affleck beefy physique happening even with the ta tactical suit because even though this is a completely different suit completely different sculpting detail molding of the limbs body parts etc you can still see just how wider the shoulders are how much girthier the trapezoids behind his back are but also how much shorter his neck really is to then make everything look a bit more accurate so you'll see right there that the shoulders are completely night and day as far as just how they are interpreted via the bat suit right there so you can have all the little nuances right here to make it look like the bbs suit but you got to make sure that you get an awful lot of that proportioning right and i do think that they came a little short when it came to the shoulders but as far as likeness yes i definitely see the butt chin the lips the slightly puffy cheeks on this mouth plate for the tactical suit bat flick that is much more accurate but 
I can't really complain too much about the BVS either because, yes, there are some shortcomings, but paint job is done really well. There's life behind the eyes. It actually looks like it complements the figure and the cowl and works really well with the cloth cape that they decided to throw in on this time as opposed to a rubberized cape. Though, I have gone on record to say that the tactical suit uh, cape right here that even though it's a rubberized piece it actually is really well tailored and t uh, textured as far as actual detailing behind the cape that it actually works really favorably with the figure itself and this is still amongst one of my favorite McFarlane Batmans ever not just for movie properties but just McFarlane Batman figures overall that's including some of the comic versions so to see that they nailed it out of the park like that before hopefully this will more or less kind of serve as a very serviceable comparison as far as how they've come whether it be accuracies with the suit accuracies with the detail behind the likeness etc and even though it may not reach the heights that this did this is still doing a very adequate job or at the very least much more adequate than whatever the hell this was from the flash there's <laughs> I don't even want to say anything. Just let the visuals speak for themselves. Jesus Christ, look at this. Yeah, I appreciate that you guys were kind of experimenting with the cloth cape, but whatever happened here, I, I still believe that this is Jesse Eisenberg in the suit, and somewhere down the line, they skimped out on the idea, or the Flash movie scrapped the scene. It's like a deleted scene on the cutting room floor that they didn't bother to include as an extra on the DVD and Blu-ray. And that's probably why we ended up with this travesty. Now with the release of this guy, I can only imagine how many people are trying to get rid of whatever the hell this was. Especially since that figure, that Flash version, was notorious for also having really difficult to work with joints. Thankfully, something that does not plague the BVS Batman. So I'm very, very thankful for that. The head, of course, can rotate 360 degrees as per usual. Tilt up and down pretty favorably. No complaints there. I did have a little bit of stiffiness happening with the shoulder joint, especially since you do see the washer right there that kind of, at least for me, implies that there might be some butterfly motion, but it was a little bit stuck, so I had to give it an extra pass with the hairdryer. But once that happened, very firm, but also still very fluid joints on the top arms that are able to rotate vertically 360, especially with the cloth cape, allowing it to be able to be fully mobile, as well as proper extension towards the sides, as you can kind of see right there. Now, as far as that butterfly movement, a little bit is happening, and you can see the washer kind of moving in favor of that, but it's not the most generous one. I've seen some other McFarlane's be a little bit better with those joints. Not a whole lot of that happening with the BVS Batman here, which is a little bit of a bummer considering that I was kind of relying on that movement, on that joint, to give them a little bit of added volume to the shoulders to make them look a little girthier because out of the box the shoulders were just a little slumped and because of that it caused more of the lack of size and kind of creating the illusion that the neck was even longer but at least being able to kind of shrug up the shoulders a little bit higher gives them a little bit more of that imposing look that Batfleck always kind of had in those movies. The bicep swivel right underneath, however, can still rotate, although it's a little bit on the stiff side only because of where the plastic is kind of getting around, but it can still happen. Two joints at the elbows that are fully able to bend all the way up. And then, of course, the wrist cut can fully bend the hands inwards and outwards as well as allow them to rotate 360. Then we get to a cool set of torso joints right there with the mid-torso cut that can totally, for the most part, turn... <laughs> left and right but because of how girthy and wide he is which I expected him to be he can't really rotate 360 degrees I get a little quite a good amount of resistance right about right there once you kind of start crossing the obliques and I don't want to press my luck but it still feels pretty good in hand and some really good crunching inwards and outwards and sides to sides on the mid torso cut so that one's actually really really good and then you even have further crunching and extension towards the back and front on the waist that can also turn an additional few extra degrees before it starts to flex the belt just a little bit so do be careful there but you do have additional movement that can almost almost turn the full 180 but like I said I don't want to stress it and considering how in demand this figure is right here before they start to stock up a little while longer, I, I don't really feel like pressing my luck. But the legs can still extend towards the front like so, almost at 
I want to say just a little shy of the 45 degree angle before the butt diaper or the crotch diaper right here starts to flex just a little bit right there. But it's still fluid enough to allow some movement towards the front like so. I can even doubt that Batflick was able to do that in suit anyways. Extension towards the back stops right about right there, but still pretty decent. And then extension towards the sides on both legs can happen almost at the full 180 but not quite there, so do be careful there. Two joints at the knees that can fully bend. It becomes a little standard issue, except it is a little bit on the hard side, so do be careful with your unit in case you do have to give it an extra pass with a hair dryer or boiling water. And then the ankle joints that I really like, only this time they were made a little on the girthier side to complement the boots, but they are very flush, can bend fully down as well as tilt all the way up like so as far as that and full rotation on the top part to allow the rotating on the ankle 360 degrees as well as even some slight pivoting inwards and outwards to be able to give you some secure footing and then you technically do have toe articulation right there except it is a little bit on the smaller side for these boots so it's there but it doesn't complement the figure as well as it could have but again it's the toes no harm no foul so it's it's one of the least amount of problems as far as what it is that you're doing here with the poses, especially if you're going to be posing him with some of the ad additional accessories that McFarlane decided to toss in, which are an extra set of fisted hands. He comes with these open, clenching, gripping hands, but you can swap them out very generously with the fisted hands, of course, because this this is Batflick we're talking about. He's going to be pummeling guys to a pulp like he does in the movies. And then we get to some conflicting nature with the additional gadgets that he can hold in those gripping hands. Because, again, it goes back to the history that McFarlane has had with Batflick. The very tumultuous history that I did, never really imagined that they would have. He comes with a grapple gun, which is very decently sculpted and modeled after the version that he had in the movie. And you would argue it's a little on the oversized area, but I would say he's ha it's half oversized. I want to say the muzzle and pretty much this entire rotating part right here that serves as the grappling a aspect of the gun is sculpted and to scale, but it's the handle that it's a little bit on the massive side. But thankfully, it's due to that massiveness that makes it pretty firm and snug to fit into either of his gripping hands. You basically have to aim it against his hand and then rotate it to then flex the his digits and then have him hold it like so. So that's pretty much how you end up with it. So as you can see, I want to argue that this area, you know what, on second thought, now looking at it properly, yeah, it's a little bit, it's a little bit on the oversized <laughs> area. So yeah, I mean, it does the job. And I personally would have welcomed some additional paint apps because if you've seen the movie, uh, at least the amount of times that you have, in case you happen to be amongst those that love it, <laughs> I don't want to step on those toes, but even though the sculpting and the actual accuracy behind the grapple is accurate, the paint is very, very much lacking, considering that this is all one solid black piece, but the in the movie itself, it's kind of like this smoky jet black with a brown wooden handle, so I would have appreciated just an extra little decal, at least towards the handle here, to make it look wooden, to make it look like it's brown and embossed with the you know, the much more earthier look to, you know, the, or the very makeshift, very robust look to the grapple that he designed. So that would have been a welcome touch. But I feel like most people are not going to be bothered by that. They're going to be bothered by the oversizedness of that grapple. Which, if they were bothered by the grapple being a little oversized, then uh, get ready. Because he also comes with two really oversized batarangs, which are modeled after the version that he had in the movie. And they're pretty much very, very thick Batarang solid made pieces. And they don't really come with any additional added details. And again, they are a bit on the oversight. They're almost about the same size as his chest symbol. You can see that right there. Jesus Christ. And almost as thick as him. You can see that right there. They fit pretty snug into his hands. So there's no complaints as far as them constantly falling off. You could definitely say that about them. But at the same time they do come across, from a visual standpoint, a little silly. And again, this comes from a slightly puzzled mind state, considering that, looking back, they've done batarangs like this before that are way better. Still a little oversized, but this is actually the batarang included with the tactical suit Zack Snyder 2021 bat flick that I just compared him to at the beginning of this review. And you'll see right there that, yeah, it's about the same size as the 
new one that just came out, probably just a little bit on the smaller size as far as width, but you have that additional little detail with the paneling happening on the inside. But I would say more importantly, it's way thinner. It feels like something that can actually be thrown and have some aerodynamic to it. It feels like a legit battering. Whereas this, I don't know. I understand the intention behind them being batarangs, but I think they could have cut back a little bit on the girthiness to make them look a little bit more accurate. Now, beyond those batarangs, we also compared the entirety of the figure to the 2021 tactical suit, Justice League Batman, that came out a couple years ago. We even compared him to the atrocity that was that Flash Batman. However, there was one other comparison that I definitely wanted to make with this guy that may or may not ruffle some feathers considering the two different companies that are kind of targeting different demographics of collectors, but I still feel needs to be called out and referenced. And that is going to be the Mafex BVS Batman. So obviously, there's going to be... A bit of a size discrepancy, there's going to be a little bit of a scaling issue because that's obviously not where Mafex kind of plays ball with other companies. They're not going to be making something that is designed to be on the same shelf, let alone maybe even the same room as your McFarlane's. So here we have a BVS Mafex Batman that came out, I want to say about four or five years ago. I don't remember exactly where, when he was released. But this is the version that was b to be part of that line, separate from the Justice League one, separate from even some other interpretations. We even have another version that's about to come out either late this year or early next year that is modeled after the uh, Zack Snyder 2021 uh, Justice League before he puts on the tactical suit for the ending. And so this is the version that I managed to acquire secondhand from a different seller because I definitely wanted there to be a comparison, especially when this guy was uh, unveiled, that these two needed to be compared as far as, you know, why it is that maybe some extra money is put towards a company like Mayfix. This is probably one of the few cases where there's a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B, for, for the most part, as far as value, uh, McFarlane actually was able to edge out a little bit of the competition with the asterisk being that Mafex may have been a little... They may have bit a little bit more than they could chew with this version because even though I will go on record to say that the gray and the overall color scheming of the Mafex is much more accurate than that of the McFarlane's. I can, we can all pretty much agree on that. That's something that, again, I don't know what McFarlane was really going for as far as this blue tint thing. And the gold on the belt could be a little bit too shiny, a little bit too unweathered. Because that's something that Mafex was definitely able to hit in, in Strife here. Was the, gray, the muted gray complementing the black with the symbol, the cowl overall, as well as the cape. And then we have that very muted airbrush look to the overall belt that also looks to scale with the pockets and the canisters on the sides versus the buckle in the middle whereas over here it looks a little oversized outside of that though again we're playing with two different scales but there's still a little bit it's almost like the companies can't nail the shoulder areas here it's a little disproportionate even though the torso looks great here, the shoulders do look like they're round enough to give it that imposing look, especially since they were able to nail the animalistic look of the cowl to make it look very cone-shaped as far as giving it that angular look, especially when you bend the head down and he kind of has that brooding look. It, it From the side, that looks legit. But when you turn it around, you then see that the torso is a little bit on the skinny side. You see, you can even see the gaps in between the shoulders and the chest when you move the joints about on the Mafex. And you see an awful lot of gapage happening right there. I appreciate the textured look behind the suit itself as well as, again, the color scheming to resemble that iconic Batflip look. But scaling, again, it's a little bit weird because I understand that they're going for a smaller scale. That's always been something that Mafex has been known for. But at the same time, if you're going to be playing around this area here, you got to make sure that you're nailing the accuracy. And I feel like there's areas where it does feel a little bit wonky. Legs overall look perfect, belt, color scheming, but it's around the shoulder and torso area that may fix leaves lacking. And whereas the McFarlane was able to do very little with the cloth cape to give it a little added quality and make sure that it's draping over the sides and kind of makes up for a little bit of that imposing nature that it was lacking from the shoulders and the proportioning. 
The Mayfix kind of overcompensates with a slightly elongated cape that's a little difficult to manage. It looks great around the shoulder area because, like I said, it's kind of giving it that hulkier look. But then when you get to the bottom, it gets a little difficult to manage despite being wired, despite being a much uh, thicker fabric that's a bit more quality. There's still an awful lot of shelf space, you could argue, is being taken up by this area right here. But again, it's like... With Mayfix, they're so close yet so far qualities as far as little copper details on the boots and the gauntlets and, like I said, little details like that. But then when you see a little bit of the proportioning, even if it does help the articulation, Mayfix has some really smooth joints that I've always loved, specifically around the joints that can bend, like the elbows, the knees, and even a little bit of the le top leg and ankle and wrist area, especially since you have to take into account that Mayfix is always going to be able to throw in extra accessories that even that can match the extra price tag that you're paying for of course with mafex beyond the additional hands of just having fisted pairs or open hand pairs like with mcfarlane mafex is going to come with additional you know gestured hands specific hands for certain gadgets etc but they're also going to be able to nail the accessories that mcfarlane tried to do over here there's the battering which is not only to scale with the mafex but it's also properly painted properly detailed with the little lining on the inside and it's also the proper size and thickness so it actually feels like something that he can throw and hold in one of his gripping hands versus whatever McFarlane intended to do so over here which again it's rather strange because we've seen them being able to nail the the batarang before so that was very perplexing and then as far as that grapple again not only is it to scale but you have the additional little chrome paint this is exactly what I really wish that McFarlane had done which is to have it predominantly black minus a few chrome detailings to make it look like it's operational. But to me, more importantly, I could have given or uh, given or taken the chrome details. But it's that wooden look to the handle with the brown paint app that really would have made this awesome. Even if the sizing is a little and the girthiness of it is a little weird. If you have done it with at least this attention to detail over here as far as that brown paint on the handle... We would have nailed it, but that's pretty much what you got dealing with McFarlane. And Mayfix was able to make up with. And on top of that, Mayfix still throws in a couple of little gadgets here and there. I think he has a, a smoke grenade canister uh, that he can hold in one of his hands. As well as these extra gripping hands to be able to hold that shotgun type thing. I don't know if it throws grenades or the kryptonite grenades or whatever the case may be, but he comes with that additional gun accessory. Lord knows that McFarlane is not going to throw in any sniper gun or rifle, whatever it is that he had at towards the end of BBS. With this guy, you're going to have to make do with the grapple as well as the batterings. But again, that's not a harp on McFarlane. It's just something that's going to happen by nature. So, yeah, Mafex, I personally feel had so many things working in his favor but I'm still gonna have to give the win on over to McFarlane only because of the value you're getting for about I guess it's technically not even $20 I think it's like $22.99 but you get a very solid 7 inch scale figure with really good articulation accessories could have wor been worked on a little bit better but at least as far as where we're at here in the timetable of things this is a really good thing for what you're paying for with Mafex, especially since this guy is now pretty much known to be a bit of a grail. This guy is going for a very hefty price because of how, how difficult he is to come by. But even with a very good likeness to Ben Affleck there on the cowl, I feel like Mafex is due for a 2.0 on this guy. On the BVS Batman, just like McFarlane kind of sort of did by going back to the drawing board. This is a call to Mafex. I feel like with how far they've come with some great... Uh, outings recently, especially for Rob Pattinson's The Batman Mafex figure that I absolutely love. I, that attention to detail brought forward to a classic 2016 BVS suit 2.0 because they've known to do 2.0s and even 3.0s before like they did with the Dark Knight Trilogy Bale Batman. A Mafex 2.0? Oh my god. That would be damn near god tier and I would happily pay for that pre-order day one. As of right now, however, I would say that your best case for a pretty solid BVS Batman is actually going to be coming from McFarlane Toys because I am personally happy with this guy despite, like I said, a little lacking on the accessories, the likeness could be contested, and a little bit of the proportioning around the shoulders is a little bit inaccurate in my opinion that just kind of stood out to me from a negative light. 
But taking into account all the little trappings that they were able to nail, moving past the color scheming of the blue tint, the suit itself is still pretty quality as far as the texture work detail, the little pulls to make it look like it's actual cloth, pulling on the skin of the armor, and then just overall the presence that you're getting here from a McFarlane Batfleck utilizing the BVS 2016 suit that doesn't have any gimmicks, it's no tactical version, it's no nothing, and you're able to nail him down for a solid $22.99 with the additional hands, the additional batarangs, despite the oversized uh, look and nature of both the batarangs and the grapple. At least you are got so much playability here for a good price that I would say is a really good step in the right direction of McFarlane doing what so many other companies are probably also doing because of the lack of superhero movies from both Marvel and DC and going back to things that deserve a second go around, a remake if you will. And that's going to bring forward from me a very, very high 8 out of 10. It's only because of those scaling issues for both the oversizedness of the accessories and then the undersizedness of the shoulders that really bring a, a couple of notches down for me. That could have been an excellent 9 out of 10, but it's still a worthwhile entry in the collection should you come across them in stores because I know that right now he's very difficult to find them online. It's practically sold out everywhere, but in the off chance that he does come back online when you're watching this, there are going to be affiliate links in the description that you guys can use to pre-order him or pick him up in some capacity. Outside of that, I do want to ask you guys, what other figures do you think they need to go back? I already, we already talked about this before as far as the Batman Forever, Batman Returns, but what's a very niche version of Batman you would love to see either McFarlane or hell even Mafex just like I touched upon give it be given a 2.0 or even a 3.0 especially with maybe acquisition of licenses or simply just advancements in 3d technology or sculpting them being able to nail certain looks what's a certain figure in hell it doesn't even have to be Batman it could be Superman uh, Wonder Woman etc what character or what figure do you want to see be given a 2.0 or a 3.0 that you would happily pay full price or maybe even aftermarket premium price for? Let me know down in the comments. And while you're down there, hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video. Hit the thumbs down if you didn't. And as always, appreciate you for watching and stay humble. See you later.